we know how matrices with real eigenvalues act on vectors. Those matrices are stretching their eigenvectors by a factor of lambda, the corresponding eigenvalue. But what happens if the eigenvalues are complex? How does a matrix act in that case? In order to discover this, we will look at so-called scaling rotation matrices first in this video. A scaling rotation matrix C is of the following general form. C equals A, A, B minus B, which means that the elements on the diagonal are the same and the elements of the diagonal are the same apart from a sign. So we can, for example, take a matrix where we put A equals to 1 over here, and we need a 1 here as well. And let's take B, for example, minus 1. That means that the minus B over here becomes a 1. So that's an example of a scaling rotation matrix. But where is the scaling and where is the rotation? Well, we will see that soon. We can represent this matrix also as a point in the plane, because the matrix is defined by A and B, by two numbers. I can put A on the x-axis and B on the y-axis, and then I have a point AB in the plane. And I can give this point AB its Cartesian coordinates A and B, but I can also give the polar coordinates R and phi. And we know how to convert Cartesian to polar coordinates, and I have A equals R cosine phi and B equals R sine phi. Why would we do that? Well, if we plug in the A equals R cosine phi and the B equals R sine phi in a specific uh, form of C, then we find C equals, we get R's everywhere, so I can take the R out. So R in front. On the diagonal cosine phi, And off diagonal, b sine phi minus b a minus sine phi. But we now see how this C matrix acts on vectors. The r is just a scaling factor, multiplies the length of a vector by a factor of r, makes vectors longer or shorter depending on whether r is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. And the matrix over there, with the cosine, cosine, sine, and minus sine phi, we recognize this matrix. It is a rotation matrix. It rotates vectors uh, through an angle of phi counterclockwise. So what does C do? A C matrix scales vectors by a factor of r and rotates them by a factor of phi. And that's why a C matrix is called a scaling rotation matrix. Let's look at an example. So here we have, we have our C, again the same C as we had over here. We had A equals 1, B equals minus 1. What do we get for an R and for a phi? Let's put the matrix in the plane. A, and A equals 1, B equals minus 1. What do we get for our R and for our phi? Well, R is a distance from the point to the origin. So 1 squared plus minus 1 squared equals 1 plus 1 equals 2 and then the square root. So we get square root of 2 as a scaling factor. And the angle of phi equals pi over 4, but we go the other way around, so our phi would become minus pi over 4. So if you have a scaling rotation matrix C, you can find the r and the phi immediately by plotting the matrix, say, in a plane. But we start out with eigenvalues. What does this have to do with eigenvalues? What does this have to do with complex eigenvalues? Well, let's see. If you complete, compute the eigenvalues of the matrix C, I compute the determinant a minus lambda, a minus lambda, b minus b, in order to compute the eigenvalues. We expand the determinant a minus lambda times a minus lambda minus minus b times b. 
So a minus lambda squared plus b squared. Don't work out the brackets, it's easier like this. Put the b squared to the other side, take the square roots now, and we obtain a minus lambda equals plus or minus bi. So we find, finally, lambda equals a plus or minus bi. So there are our complex eigenvalues. Every C matrix has complex eigenvalues. And what does this mean for our picture over here? In the A, with the A, the B, the R, and the phi? Well, in fact, lambda equals A plus B, B I is one of the eigenvalues. So what we have over here is that we have the lambda over there. We have the A on the x-axis, which is the real part of lambda. And the B on the y-axis, which is the imaginary part of lambda. So this plane we started out with is nothing more than the complex plane where the point AB corresponds to the eigenvalue lambda. Moreover, we know R is the distance from lambda to the origin, so that is the modulus of lambda. And phi is the angle with the positive x-axis, also known as the argument of lambda. So, now we know what a scaling rotation matrix does. Scaling rotation matrix has complex eigenvalues. But wait, would every scaling rotation matrix, uh, uh, would every matrix with complex eigenvalues be a scaling rotation matrix? Don't know yet. Subject of the next video.